to 1,924. Our COVID-19 treatment centers have gone from having zero patients to now being full because of the upsurge in infections. Particularly worrying is the fact that the Ghana Health Service is recording on the average 200 new cases of COVID infections daily. The number of patients requiring hospitalization and intensive care is rising. The number of severe cases, which stood at 18 a week ago, has increased sharply to 120. Two weeks ago, there was no critical case. We now have 33 in our treatment facilities. Again, according to statistics from the Ghana Health Service, the considerable number of persons who are severely ill are surprisingly relatively youthful persons with no previous underlying health conditions. The number of confirmed deaths has increased sadly from 338 persons to 352 within the period. Recent genomic sequencing undertaken by our scientists have established that some arriving passengers tested positive for new variants of COVID-19. Detailed investigations of the cases indicate that apart from arriving passengers at our airport who tested positive, infected persons have had recent histories of attending parties, weddings, end of year office programs, family get-togethers, and funerals. At these gatherings, most of them abandoned the use of the masks and were engaged in actions that led to them contracting the virus. Have recorded active cases. Our health infrastructure, it will severely undermine the efforts government is making to revitalize the economy and put our nation back onto the path of progress and prosperity following the ravages of the pandemic. It's my duty to protect lives and livelihoods. In furtherance of this, I've instructed the Inspector General of Police to direct officers, men and women of the police service to ensure the rigorous enforcement of the law on mask wearing at all public places and in public transport. They're also to ensure the closure of all nightclubs, pubs, beach, cinemas, and beaches that may be operating in defiance of the law. They will be assisted by the other security agencies, if need be. Persons in marketplaces, workplaces, and operators of public transport must conduct their activities in accordance with the hygiene and safety protocol. The wearing of masks in these places is mandatory. Regulatory agencies will undertake random checks to ensure conformity with COVID-19 rules. We do not want to go back to the days of partial lockdowns, which had a negative impact on our economy and on our way of life. But should that become necessary, that is, should the number of active cases continue to increase at the current rate, I will have no option but to reimpose these restrictions because it is better to be safe than to be sorry. And the disease control office in that health directorate. So there's a system in place at Ghana Health Service to support every school should there be an outbreak or should there be a suspicion of a case in the school. So with that, I have confidence that uh, Ghana Health Service will help us alleviate any fears or any doubts in if the unfortunate happens, what will happen? Ghana Health Service takes over the case, it becomes a national case, and they will handle it to the end. So I think with that, I'm quite confident that we have a process in place. Well, there you have it. The this, is, this is a threat uh, to, to, to the country, and it is very possible that if we don't adhere strictly to the protocols, it's only a matter of time, and we will, we will get there. If you have monitored, the behavior of the second waves. The second wave is more severe than the first wave. And for many countries that have experienced this, 
the peak point of the second wave is almost twice the peak point of the first wave. We recorded our first wave in somewhere June, July, where we recorded close to 1,000 new cases on a particular day with our peak active case count of over 5,000. If we don't manage the second wave well, we are likely to have more than twice, which means we could have about 2,000 new cases on a particular day with an active case count stretching close to 10,000. This is how the second wave looks like in many countries. So if you have monitored the second wave pattern, uh, things don't look very normal. People normally get more severe disease. It tends to create more confusion and chaos than the first than the first one. So I, I kind of agree with what you are saying that if we don't manage things well, things can speed out of control. That is why we need to put all hands on deck and, mm. and bring this uh, under control. For the first, so this is this is uh, quite a worrying uh, uh, thing that I mean is one of the key news that I picked from what the president said. The fact is that we have known that 90 percent of our morbidity and mortality cases are in adults who are um, elderly, more than 50 years, and have chronic underlying illness. To have such thing happen in children, I mean, in the youth, young people without any underlying condition, is, is a serious thing. And if you have monitored the waves, I mean, the US and the EU, this is the pattern that they recorded in their second and third waves. When many young people now began to experience, I mean, the very high severe from the disease, who were some who were admitted and some who died. The reason for this is too early to tell whether this could be as a result of of uh, of, of the of the present, uh, of the new street. I mean, uh, getting into the various communities and causing this kind of pattern. I'm not too sure about that. We will have to wait for how the results will be when this comes on. But for me. Is a key thing uh, telling us that if we don't manage things well, the young, exuberant, active people who are moving about and not fit to attend protocols may themselves fall sick, and that will be very difficult to manage. I mean, of most concern are children less than five years, especially who may not know how to manage and keep themselves well. Mm. If you have outbreak in such children and it has severe toll on them, managing them, I think, will be very difficult. So. Having this in young population, I think the president uh, has drawn our attention to this and spicy. What I'm looking out for is what the age range. Are these children, are these youth, are these elderly, I mean, a bit older people? It's good to have good understanding of the pattern of the data so we can know very well how this is going to be. But for me, I think we have to be very careful, especially mm. the young people, and take this more serious and understand. Talking about.